Hey, hey, seventh grade. So our learning target for today is I can add and subtract positive and negative mixed numbers. We'll be on page 13. Okay, so you've dealt with mixed numbers before in elementary school. You, what will be different about today's work a little bit is there will be some negatives involved and we'll talk about how to handle those negatives. So we're gonna have some subtraction today. So if we have subtraction, of course, we will stop chop chop as step one. You can abbreviate any of these. I'm going too fast, pause that video. So we start by stop chop chopping. Step one, stop chop chop. Okay, the second step then after we stop chop chop is we're gonna to convert to improper fractions or change the improper fractions. You maybe remember how to do that since elementary school, but we'll review it today in case you've kind of forgotten how to do that. All right, group, and then because we have different denominators and the sign in between is gonna be addition, we're gonna change from a subtraction problem to addition problem, we're gonna to need to find a common denominator. And the last step, of course, in any work is to either check or simplify. So we're gonna go ahead and simplify. So those are four steps, first, second, third, and last. Now. We'll start with a problem that you've done since elementary school. Seven and one eighth plus eight and two thirds. So you, one option is you could add the whole numbers and then deal with the fractions afterwards. But instead, I'm gonna convert everything to an improper. If you have, feel more comfortable adding the seven and the eight and then um, adding the fractions, finding common denominator, I'm fine with that. I'm just gonna show you kind of a long way to solve. Okay, so for step one, we would stop chop chop if necessary. We don't have subtraction, so we can avoid that step. The next step is to change to an improper fraction. If you recall from elementary school, to change to an improper fraction, you would multiply the denominator and the whole number. Multiplication happens there. So we'd multiply, which is 56. And then after you get that product, you would add the numerator, 56 plus that numerator of one becomes 57. Hopefully you remember how to do that since elementary school. And then you just rewrite the denominator of eight. So you have 57 over eight. Okay. Now, the second fraction, same game. We're gonna to convert to an improper fraction, so we're gonna multiply the denominator, three, by the whole number, eight. So there's multiplication happening there. Three times eight is 24. And then we're gonna add that product to the numerator. 24 plus two is 26. And then we rewrite the denominator. So we have fractions of 57 over eight plus 26 over three. Okay. So now moving on, we have to then in the next step find a common denominator. That's the third step up above. Common denominator for eight and three that I'm gonna use, a number that eight goes into that three also goes into is 24. Hopefully you remember how to do this in elementary, since elementary school. All right guys, so we're working for that common denominator. We need to turn that eight into a 24, so we would multiply by three. That gives us a nice 24 in the denominator. Rule of math is then copy and paste. So we copy and paste that numerator, so we have 57 times three in the numerator. 57 times three in the numerator. So this is kind of a long way to solve it. I know that there are other ways, but this is the way that we're gonna approach it today in our work, is 171. 57 times three. All right, group. Now, the other problem fraction over here, we're gonna change that three to a 24, we're gonna multiply by eight. That gives us a 24 in the denominator. We're gonna copy paste it. So we have 26 times eight in the numerator. Gives us 208. All right, so cleaning this up. So we add our numerators, 171 plus 208. 171 plus 208. Typing that in our calculator is 379. We're gonna drag that denominator right on over there with us, so that's 24. So we have 379 over 24. So our question is, getting that in lowest terms, then we would say, how many 24s go into 379? So that's the real question there. So we're gonna say 379 divided by 24. It goes in there 15 whole times. You can use your calculator to support your work here. No problem on that at all, guys. You don't have to log division any of these. The remainder on that is 19. So it goes in there, 15 is the whole number. The remainder is 19 24 So 15 and 19 24 Go ahead and write that down. 15 and 19 24 All right, so next question over here. For this question, we are going to ignore the the nine, uh, the negative. Be very careful about that. Ignore the negative. We're going to reattach it in a few minutes, but it's, we're going to act like it doesn't exist. So we're going to go ahead and multiply these two. That's four times four, which is 16. We're ignoring the negative. Leave it out. Leave it out. Add the numerator. 16 plus three gives us 19. 
put the four back. At this point, we're going to reattach that negative. So we do the work to turn to an improper fraction. We reattach the negative. That's the first fraction. On the second fraction, remember, we're multiplying the denominator and the whole number, multiplication. So that's 12 times 1, which is 12. And then we're going to add the numerator. So 12 plus 5 gives us 17 over 12. So that's step two, which is to turn to an improper fraction. Our job now is to find a common denominator. So a denominator that 4 goes into, that 12 also goes into. The denominator I'm going to choose is 12. 12 is the denominator that will work. 4 goes into 12 and 12 goes into 12. So this one is set over here on the right-hand side. No work required. I'm going to just drag it down. If we haven't used it, drag it down. On the left-hand side, we need to get from a 4 to a 12. So we should be multiplying by 3. That gives us a nice 12 in the denominator. And then we're going to copy-paste that in the numerator. So that becomes 3 multiplied by negative 19. So that's really a multiplication happening up here, not a subtraction. So we have a 3 multiplied by negative 19. So go ahead and do that work. 3 multiplied by negative 19 gives us negative 57. All right, now that we have that common denominator, we're going to add those numerators. So we're saying negative 57 plus 17. So I have $17 in my bank. And I'm trying to take 57 out. Can I take 57 out of a bank that has only 17 in it? No, I can take 17 out, which leaves me still with negative $40 in the bank. In, or, or lack of $40 in the bank, I should say. Denominator is 12. So we have this improper fraction. Number on top is bigger than number on the bottom. We're going to convert to what's called a mixed number. We know our sign is negative because triangle problem says so. We want to know how many 12s go into 40. That's what my brain is thinking about right now. How many 12s go into 40? Well, 12 goes into 40 three times, which is 36. The remainder on that is 4. So it goes in there three whole times. Remainder, 4 12s. Now, our job is to go to lowest terms. So we know that 4 12s, we can divide each the top and the bottom, 4 and 12. We can divide by 4, which reduces to 1 3rd. So this becomes negative 3 and 1 3rd. What did I just do in that last step? I looked at the numerator, 4, and I looked at the denominator, 12, and thought about what number can I divide into 4 that I can also divide into 12. So I divided the top by 4 and the bottom by 4, and that gave me 1 third. Final answer is negative 3 and 1 third. Stick with me, 7th grade. I know this is kind of some tough stuff, but stay with it. Here we go. Next problem over here. <laughs> step 1 is to stop, chop, chop. Any subtraction problems, we stop, chop, chop. Nope. Now, convert to an improper fraction. We're going to go ahead and multiply the denominator and the whole number. We get 8 times 4, which is 32. And then we're going to add in that numerator. So we have 32 plus 5 is 37. We attach that, negative, or that denominator of 8, so that becomes 37 over 8. If that's confusing to you, you should pause and rewatch. Make sure you know how to convert to an improper like you did in elementary school. The sign in the middle we've changed to addition. And now we have this negative over here. Remember that we, we, we wait on the negative. Leave the negative out while we convert. That's 3 times 4. That denominator times the whole number, which is 12. Not negative 12, just 12. Plus 1 is 13 over 4. And then at this point, we're going to reattach the negative. Great, that's step two from above. Step three says find that common denominator. So we're looking for a denominator that eight goes into and four also goes into. So I'm going to use the denominator of eight because eight goes into eight, four goes into eight. All right, on the left-hand side, we are looking good over here. 37 over eight, we don't have to make any changes. So if I haven't used it, ah, drag it down. On the right-hand side, we need to go from four to eight. So we're going to multiply by two. Copy, paste. We have a triangle problem up in that numerator. So we have a negative on the 13. We have a positive on the 2, gives me a negative 26 in the numerator. Cleaning that up then, 37 plus 26. 37 plus 26 gives me 11, positive 11. Remember, we have $37 in the bank. You're trying to take 26 out. Can we do it? Yes, we can. In the denominator, we have an 8. So our job now is to ask, how many 8s go into 11? 8 goes into 11 one time. The remainder on that is 3. So we go one whole time, remainder three eighths. Answer should be one and three eighths. All right, guys, so that was our first kind of experience with some negatives involved in it. It probably feels like a very much an elementary problem, 
of subtraction, but we stop, chop, chop. So this fourth and final question that we're going to do, I'm not going to do that word problem below, is really the kind of the new seventh grade feel for it. Because you have a subtraction sign and you have a negative within this problem. I said, no, we stop, chop, chop. On the front end there, we're going to convert that to an improper. So we're going to say 4 times 10. This is multiplication right here. Just remember, there's a multiplication sign here. We are ignoring the negative. Do not touch that negative. That's 40, not negative 40, 40. Plus the numerator is 43. Reattach negative, or reattach the denominator, which is 4, and then drag that denominator, or drag that negative down, reattach it, negative 43 over 4. If that's confusing, please stop, rewind, and watch again. We are not putting the negative in until the end. If I haven't used it, I drag it down. Okay, multiplication kicks in over here to turn to an improper. We have denominator 5 multiplied by whole number 7. We have a multiplication sign here. Remember, we're ignoring that negative. That's 35, not negative 35. It's positive 35 plus 4 is 39. The denominator on that is 5. No change on the denominator. At this point, we're going to reattach that negative. So it becomes negative 39 over 5. If I'm going too fast, pause the video. Otherwise, let's keep on rolling. Our dilemma right now is we have unlike denominators. So we're going to have to get a common denominator before 4 and 5. The denominator that we're going to use for 4 and 5 is 20. All right, so we're going to go from 4 to 20, so we're going to multiply by 5. Copy, paste. So we're going to copy, paste that numerator, so we have 5 multiplied, just so you know that's a multiplication up there. Don't, get, don't think that's subtraction. So 5 multiplied by negative 43. 5 multiplied by negative 43. We have a triangle problem there. I'm using my calculator, actually, is negative 215. Make sure you have a negative 215 there. All right, group, on the other, hand, other side here, we have a 5 going to 20, which is a 4. 5 times 4 gives me that nice 20 I need in the denominator. Copy, paste. We have a triangle problem in the numerator. I'm actually going to use my calculator on that. Negative 39 multiply by 4. Go ahead and type that in as well. Negative 39 multiplied by 4 is negative 156. Make sure you're getting negative 156. All right, group, so we know my denominator is 20. In my numerator, we have negative 215 plus negative 156. Negative 215 plus negative 156. Negative 215 plus negative 156 becomes negative 371. Okay, guys, so how do we convert back? Well, we know the answer is going to be negative here for sure. And we're asking how many 20s go into 371. I'm going to erase this so I have some space to write here. So how many times is 20? go into 371. We already have identified the negative. Well, 20 goes into 37 one time. <coughs> and that's 171. And 20 goes into 171 six, 160 times. Remainder on that is 11. Now, you can use your calculator if you need to. That's no problem at all. So we know it's negative because that's a triangle problem over here. So it's negative 18 times. The remainder on that we said was 11. So negative 18 and 11 20ths. 11 is a prime number, so we know that we're done. Okay, guys. So we're going to skip this word problem right here. That's just kind of a fun bonus problem, but because I don't want to make the video too long, I'm going to go ahead and skip that word problem. You're more than welcome to try it out if you want. Um, the answer on that, just for fun, would be that you would need one fourth cup and a one third cup. So that is the answer. Um, it's a good. Good bonus for some kids. Go ahead and try to give that a shot if you'd like. But I'm moving on to the summary. Couple things in summary. Remember step one that we're going to stop, chop, chop if necessary. Remember then, then after we do that, we have to change to improper. When we change to improper fractions, the key in the work today is that you ignore, ignore negatives. You will mess up big time if you do that. Ignore negatives. Do not pull it in. Just reattach the negative after you do that. And then, of course, the third and final step, anytime we're dealing with fractions that have addition and subtraction, is that you need a common denominator. Everybody should be writing. Go ahead. Those are our first three, our three steps for today. And then we always make sure that everything seems legit. Okay, group, so your homework for tonight, seventh grade, is going to be to do page 14. I expect to see uh, changing of imp from 
uh, to improper fractions, I expect to see common denominators, I expect to see lowest terms, stop, stop, chops, all of the skills that we talked about today in class. I should not just see answers and I do not want anything in decimal form. Everything is in fractional form, lowest terms. Your, your homework is page 14. Have a fabulous night. Fabulous night.